it's no secret that America's infrastructure is crumbling. We have more than 600,000 bridges and almost 70,000 of those desperately need repairs. This is, a, this is a major catastrophe for the state, just as far as infrastructure. And as we look here, it does appear that it's this one section between two pilings. With emergency flashers on, that orange car is still hanging on to the side of that bridge. To secure the future of our infrastructure, we must have timely and effective inspections. But currently, inspections involve costly teams of divers performing time-consuming, often dangerous, and always tedious work. Maybe there's a better way. Oh, hello. It's a quiet morning in Fort Lauderdale, and there isn't much in the water besides mangroves and the occasional fishing boat. Today, a group of Florida Atlantic University engineers are putting something new in the canal, a team of autonomous vehicles, self-piloted boats that can not only navigate through the water, but work with each other. Carl von Ellenreeder has been working on autonomous boats for 25 years. And today, he's demonstrating how his machine learning programs can be used for bridge inspection. Tell me a little bit about the experiment that you're conducting right here. What we're doing is we have a team of unmanned service vehicles that's working together with the bridge inspector to essentially look at the condition of the underwater structure of the bridge. One of the vehicles has an underwater acoustic imaging system that basically is looking at the underwater structure acoustically. There's a computer on board that takes in information from the sensors and makes decisions. So rather than sort of pre-programming them to handle a scenario in a very specific way, programming them to follow behavior responses instead, they can actually handle a wider range of scenarios. Behavioral learning means these boats are able to act on very general commands, but the details, like the fastest way to image these bridge columns, they work out on their own. The robots are going to work with a bridge inspector. I presume the bridge inspector is not a robot. No, bridge inspector is a person. Okay. And that person's basically watching the progress of the inspection on a monitor remotely on the, on the land here. Mm -hmm. And basically, if anything looks like it could be uh, a problem, then the inspector can redirect the USV team to go back and have an, a closer look at it. At which point, then you might want to dispatch divers, but now you know that you're looking for something specific. You're not just sort of sending them out at random. Well, absolutely. Some of the bridges here in Florida, they're several miles long. You're looking at uh, dozens and dozens of columns. It becomes quite tedious and quite easy for someone to make a mistake. Unmanned systems can perform monotonous, repetitive tasks that a human operator might find very difficult to sustain for a long period of time. Putting them together in, in a team with human operators where the human operator can maybe focus on, on higher level things and let the, the vehicle do uh, low level things such as control itself and make basic decisions about where it should go can be extremely helpful. Improving the safety of our infrastructure isn't the only application for Carl's autonomous technology. It could have huge effects on shipping, construction, and search and rescue. But it also points to a changing paradigm of how we will work alongside machines. As robots and computers become more capable, our traditional divisions of labor are evolving, allowing humans and robots to each focus on what they do best. <laughs> 